And this is a gorgeous goose, which is a welcome change to any turkey. Now you might be thinking, to toss out these odd bits and pieces, but oh no, not in my kitchen you don't. These are gonna add great depth of flavor and taste to a really great gravy. And that includes the little winglets. Is drizzle them with a little olive oil. Hit them with a little salt and pepper and throw them in the oven to roast up golden brown. Now what I like about a good old fatty goose is exactly that. It is rich and full of good, useful fat. And fat is flavor. And I'm gonna render this down and use that rich, flavorful fat in a couple of other dishes to accompany my goose. Over a low and gentle heat will allow that fat to slowly melt and render out and become unbelievable. Next step, I want my goose to be a perfect shape. And in order to make that happen, all I do is simply tie the two legs together because that helps in great presentation. It makes the bird sit up and look really wonderful when it comes out of the oven. And literally, it takes a minute to do it. Beautiful. Because the breast fat on a goose is pretty thick, I want to just put a little prick all through that breast fat using a fork at an angle so I don't pierce the flesh beneath. But what those little pricks do is allow that fat to render out dribble down the bird, almost self-basting, and that fat slowly crispens up. The best part of a goose is that crispy skin. A rub of olive oil, every little crook and cranny. Now the seasoning inside and out of any poultry is so important because it's that seasoning that amplifies those natural, rich, savory flavors of goose, turkey, and even chicken. So season well. Now goose really speaks to the English side of my heritage, because there it is very much a tradition at Christmas time, these beautiful Norfolk geese. I remember the very first time I got to cook a goose. I was a young cook, younger than my son Oscar, at the Dorchester Hotel my first year in the banqueting department, one of 150 in the kitchen. And we had a small event that called for geese. And I think it was six or eight geese that showed up and I got to cook and taste my first ever goose and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think that's how goose became a part of the Bonaccini Christmas. Now the way I cook my goose is certainly not a traditional way, but it works really well for me. And it starts off with great foundation of aromatics. A little onion. Gotta have some garlic in there because that really is a foundation flavor along with those onions. And some wonderful fresh thyme, woodsy, fragrant, with a little sweetness to it too. Oh, so good. And then sage. Thyme and sage are perfect with poultry. Oh, that smells so good. Cloves. Cloves are certainly something at Christmas time that play a big part. And I think a few extra cloves add that wonderful magic ability of rounding out flavors. And of course, a stick of cinnamon. And 
I love the fresh hit of citrus in the form of lemon. Now, to create my water bath or flavor bath, apple cider. Followed by a little white wine. A little more. It is Christmas after all. Now, I don't take my goose and just sit it right in that. I take a couple of little dishes and set a trivet on top of that. So now my goose is sitting above that fragrant bath of savory spice and sweet notes of flavor. All that needs to be done now is to put it in the oven. Christmas dinner is one of the most special meals of the year. But you know what makes it really extra special? Is when you get the opportunity to prepare it with family. Oscar, how is that gravy coming along? The gravy's all finished up, and this is just a super simple gravy. It's a little bit of that goose fat, the beautiful juices that were made when we roasted that goose, and a little bit of flour. Very nice. Great job on the gravy there. Thanks, Oscar. My goose is roasted and had a chance to rest in preparation for carving. So let's take a look. And feast your eyes on that. That is the Bonaccini family Christmas golden goose. This is gonna be a real treat. And I can't wait any longer. I gotta carve this bird. And last thing to go on the plate, a couple of winglets, a good bunch of fresh watercress for its pepperiness, and some crispy, green, refreshing apple. Oh, that gravy does smell good. Doesn't it? I'll grab a little of that when you're done there, Oscar. Absolutely. It's all yours. Thank you. And I like to put a little gravy just drizzle around the edge of the meat and allow it to soak it all up. And Oscar, one last Christmas wish before we have dinner. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I won. You won. It's my wish. <laughs> Done. What did you wish for? That's not how it works. I can't tell you that. It okay. won't come true otherwise. <laughs>